Kick back, relax. Welcome to the laid back life. It's laid back Marco and I live in a Japanese mountain ski resort. The ski resort I live in is called Abikogen and it's located in Tohoku, Japan. The kanji for Tohoku is made up of higashi, which means ease. And then there's the kita kanji, which means north. If you're wondering how that makes Tohoku or east north, it's due to the fact that in Japanese there's two different readings for things, the kunyomi and the onyomi. The region I live in is actually called Iwate and it's the second biggest prefecture in Japan, only being bested by Hokkaido which is kind of an island so that's cheating. Iwate means rock hand, which Iwate prefecture is actually named after Iwate mountain which doesn't look like a hand reaching up to the sky like you'd hope. This footage is actually taken in late spring and in the summer it doesn't actually get that hot here because we're on top of a mountain but as you can see in the winter things get way different. One of the issues with living in a Japanese mountain ski resort in a ski resort or a place with a lot of snow in general is you have to dig your car out every day. Um, this, um, it was actually clear yesterday funnily enough um, this is after one night of snowfall, which will be great for tomorrow when I go snowboarding. What I'd like to do is just start to get to de snowing the car itself. Like I said, if you've started the car, it'll, it'll kind of de-ice de itself a little bit. Um, but it's still a process you have to do every morning uh, before work. Right now I'm on holiday, but I'm going into the office to take care of some stuff. Okay, so now that I've de-snowed most of the car, you see it's getting snowy again, just because that's how much snow volume we get. Um, I'm gonna go get the big shovel. So this is the big shovel we have. Um, really useful for de-snowing in front of your car, so what I kind of do is get a big pile like this, and then I move it to somewhere it won't bother me when I'm getting out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and de-snow this thing by using this big shovel. All right, a tip here actually is you want to make sure around your exhaust is clear because um, if you don't, it's quite dangerous. You might die of dark carbon monoxide if you start your car up and around this exhaust area is blocked. So I'm actually going to try to get out now. I think it's decent known enough. I might uh, de-ice that mirror or the, the windshield a bit, but we're going to give it a try. So we did manage to get out, which is a fun accomplishment after you, you know, Oh, I forgot to move my rear wiper down. It's a fun accomplishment after you, you spend working. But the fun thing about a real-wheel drive car, though, as unpractical as they are, is you can dip the clutch a little bit and uh, give it a good uh, spin around the corner. <laughs> so unfortunately, there's actually no parking garages at work. Um, parking garages are actually pretty expensive. The only place you'll find great parking garages in Japan or maybe uh, arcades out here and you know yeah obviously those high class places um, hotels and that kind of thing um, but pachinko parlors actually have free parking many pachinko parlors have uh, free parking garages and that just says a lot about the pachinko business they have a bunch of excess money to burn because parking garages aren't cheap see, one thing that I see everyone else does and uh, I don't know how effective it is, but when after you get done driving, you're supposed to put your wipers up because if you don't, they'll freeze to the windshield and get damaged. These wipers are pretty trash anyway. I need to replace them, but you know, cost savings and such. <sighs> so we put them up. Oh yeah, the there is one place to shop in town, and it's a Lawson's. Um, there's a couple of restaurants around the hotel area, some inns, some bars, um, but there's not a lot. Um, and in the hotel there's, itself, there's some stuff. Maybe, maybe I'll show you around the hotel later. Um, obviously the ski resort I'm gonna show off in this video. Um, probably tomorrow when I go there. This is part of the international school I work at. Really new building, literally just got complete this year. Hope we opened our doors. I really don't have the appropriate shoes for this environment either. 
Um, I'm gonna start keeping dry socks and I have a, actually a pair of dry shoes at my desk. And so we've made it into the office now. There's a lot of nice Christmas decorations getting into the theme of Christmas. Um, I like to say that I work in the dungeon because I actually work down these stairs here and um, I don't often get to see or interact with the kids like the teachers do. Um, here's a couple more shots of kind of where I'm going into my office. It's a nice modern open concept design, uh, everyone can see. This is actually the first time that I've had a uh, separated desk that's kind of my own, which is kind of cool. I think a nice thing you can do for yourself is to decorate your desk and show aspects of your personality. So I have these drift posters and these anime things that I bought at a local art exhibit. And now we get to my desk setup where I use three monitors more two monitors and then a separate computer and I, this helps me with my efficiency so I, i'll do my main task and then i'll have my reference on my left and leave the right computer for emails and i've got my little apex squad with me always keeping me company and the nice thing about working at a school is i get to play around with the musical equipment sometimes so i'll play guitar or i fiddle around with the music production equipment the speakers things like that Another problem with living in this area is at the end of the day, you have to de-snow your car again. And there's really only one place to shop, and that's a convenience store, which is a little odd when you think about it. Having a convenience store at the top of a mountain, it just kind of has some cognitive dissonance with the nature and then a loss. In. But yes, that's the only convenience store and the only place with anything other than a couple of restaurants. Here is the only gas station in the area. They carry parts like wipers and you can get your oil changed there because they have the filters. But yeah, that's the only place to take care of your car unless you drive an hour away to the neighboring city. Uh, here are some shots of my 180SX that I took my baby out here in the snow. Since there's not much to do out here, the only thing to do when it's snowing is to go to the ski base. And this is the ski base down at the mountain. Here's the um, gondola that takes you all the way to the top of the mountain and then there's a couple lifts that'll take you. There are 12 runs in total, 12 courses across two mountains, Nishimori and Maemori. And yeah, the snow quality is really great. It makes me feel like a good snowboarder even though I know I'm not that gifted yet. <laughs> not as good as I'd like to be. But yeah, it's been quite a blast uh, heading up there. Uh, I get a free ski pass because I work at the school. And we're here at the ski building where there are shops, um, there's some food, and a, a hot spring actually. So this is a nice little cafe I've eaten here. I did like the food here. I had katsu curry. It's a little bit pricey because it, it is a ski resort, but yeah, it's got a nice atmosphere there. It's almost crazy to think that I'm one of the people who are regularly hitting the slope as if you knew me in high school I talked a lot of shit about snowboarding and skiing and that's because I couldn't afford it. It's quite expensive actually. I now realizing that you know the privilege I have of living in a ski resort and being able to use it. Here are some local beers um, up there the Dragon's Eye beers. My whole philosophy was beers. You might as well drink a calf beer. Here's some of the cute kappas. Uh, th those things are called kappa. I think they're so cute. It's supposed to be a monster, but of course, you know, everything in Japan is cute. This is a hotel resort area, and there are things to do, but you're going to spend if you, you know, there's a bar. There's a nice Indian restaurant I've been looking to check out in the food court. So there's a food court that is open during ski times. Obviously, you have Japanese food, ramen. There's curry and locally grown steak. Um, one of my favorite things to do after skiing or snowboarding is to hit the onsen and having a nice hot and cold bath plus the sauna, which I get to use for free by the way, is really nice. This is called Shirakaba no Yu, which means white birch tree bath because there's a lot of birch trees in this area. I don't have quite the clout to record inside the bath itself, but here's the lobby. At the end of the day, let's return to my house. So we're here at the Genkan of my apartment, or the entrance, and to get in you actually need a key card. Um, there's a door here, so you put this key card in your the, in the slot here. And it opens, you get on in. So we're at my unit here, same thing. It's kind of like an old hotel. 
Welcome to my humble abode. So you're in right past the door and um, this is kind of like not a standard Japanese apartment, I guess. Um, well, kind of. It's kind of, it's a little bigger than a standard Japanese apartment. It's about probably a little bigger than the first apartment I had when I moved to Japan in Matsumoto. Um, but the embarrassing thing is like you kind of have to walk past my, my sink area um, to, to go into first the kitchen-ish sort of hallway and then the living room and my bedroom's not really separated it's kind of separated with like a pseudo wall thing but yeah it's it's good enough for one person um so one thing i want to talk about here is the the shower room which also functions as a bathtub room and a dryer for your clothes um so one of the things that you have to do in Japan, which is necessary to do in Japan, just because of the size of everything. Um, which doesn't really make much sense in the country out here in Iwate, um, but is to make the most efficient use of your space. Um, and I think this stems back from when Japan was um, cultivating rice. Unlike the West, where you have this a lot of space to grow wheat, you have to make an efficient use of your plot of land to grow rice, and that kind of leads into everything in terms of cost saving, which is kind of cool in some ways. So now we're here in the kitchen hallway. It's not really a kitchen area so much as a hallway of my apartment. And um, I have two convection burners. Not a big fan of convection burners. I very much prefer cooking with gas. Um, but yeah, standard uh, Japanese prefabricated kitchen. Um, so convection burner with the sink. Um, Obviously there's cabinets and stuff for food storage. Not not as much space as you think. Um, enough for a single person in a uh, single person apartment. But a big feature that I really like of my apartment is a full-size fridge. Um, which, uh, I, I need to go shopping, but I just stocked up on some beer. It's only two in there, but it's enough for one night. Um, but yeah, having a full-size fridge is um, something that not everyone has in Japan, so it's as a plus to my kitchen, I have this little kettle here, um, this really good oven, which is, acts as a microwave as well, and a toaster. So you can see this is the living room, this is the room I spend the most time in, and I bought some cheap lights to kind of give it that um, kind of homey feel, because lights play a big impact on your life, I think. TV and the couch are actually provided by the school, um, so I'm really thankful for that. It's the first time I've had a couch and a big TV. And uh, you can see I've just kind of sprinkled these cheap lights everywhere, and it really does give it a nice, homey atmosphere. Of course, we have my gaming PC that I built by myself. I have a nice little setup here. Um, two monitors only. I kind of use the TV as a third monitor. Um, here's my keyboards. I have a little game pad. I actually really enjoy reading and looking at art books. I actually have way more books in a storage unit in Gunma, so I need to go get those. Um, and this is for my still life that I need to do. I'm trying to apply the DigiPen, so the first assignment is to draw shoes. And I threw an essay in there. And hopefully, I really wanted to do this thing called Spin in Saturday or Spinning Sunday, where I make mixes on Saturday and Sunday. And I always have some anime art um, that I bought. Those are pieces that I bought from uh, Anime Art Event in Iwate. And my guitar, which I've been playing a lot more as of recently. Um, it called out to me. I still need to fix it. There's something that the soldering messed up on or something, so I need to fix that. But yeah, and then here's my bedroom, which um, I'm kind of sleeping on two mattresses right now because I had a bed already and then the apartment came with a bed, so I need to figure out what to do with that. Post edit Marco, um, thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. Um, it does take a lot of time to um, shoot and edit these videos, so if you do like what you see, please like, sub, share. Um, share it with someone who's interested in visiting northern Japan or wants to know something about Abby Koken. Um, yeah, I think moving to Japan has been one of the, the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Um, I'm five years in and it's, it's still a, a struggle every day, so. Um, Thank you so much for my supporters, um, Matt, uh, it's been a really big uh, friend, Silva, Silva's been really huge, so thank you so much for yeah, helping me get through this, and uh, yeah, things are starting to look better now, so yeah, 
look forward to more videos in the future. So, peace.